Yep. Oh man, this is a big one. Oh yeah, this is a big one. Up and Oh my god. Look at this. It's the ticket link for the I Have to Do This Show Tour. Yeah, this thing's on sale now. You can get your own if you go to I Have to Do This dot show. But you know, if you're not careful, oh, oh, oh. oh. if you're not careful, they'll slip away just like that. So don't have slippery fingers like me. Get yourself some tickets. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are here with a very different video. Hello. Thank you so much for letting me come. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Madame Pamita, and I am a witch and a fortune teller and a candle maker and a magic maker and a mischief maker, all kinds of stuff. So. Sweet. So today we're going to do a couple of different things. I've never had any other than tarot. A couple of my friends have read read my tarot. Yeah. Is that the correct term? Yeah. But I've never had anything like professionally done. I'm brand new to this world. I wore this moon shirt because I thought it would be thematic. Do you call yourself a psychic? Do you call yourself a different term? I like the word fortune teller, the phrase cool. fortune teller because it's old school, like magical old school. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it if people call me a psychic. Mm -hmm. I don't take offense at it. I just don't refer to myself that way. So how did uh, how did you get into this world? When did it start? Well, when I was 10, my parents went to Salem, Massachusetts. And if you, you're in the East Coast, you know Salem yeah. is super witchy witchy, right? I went there for the first time uh, over Christmas. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I saw two of my relatives. I saw their graves because they were witches. And wow. they got, yeah. They, Amazing. They got stoned and hanged. It was kind of sad. Yeah, I messed this, up. Yeah. Super messed up. Rebecca Nurse and John Proctor. Well, sweet. If you want to start with tarot reading and then we can go to whatever else you want, we can kind of do a few different things. But again, this is kind of my first time doing this professionally. So I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know what my future holds. Hopefully good. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, let me tell you a little bit about, I'm going to shuffle. And while I shuffle, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. So when you're getting a tarot reading, people have different styles of reading. And my style of reading is really solutions oriented. Okay. So people come usually with a question, a problem, or something, and when we do the reading, it's like Google Maps or Waze, mm -hmm. right? You can take whatever route you want, but we can see the map of how to get to what you want. Okay. So let me ask you, um, yes. what is on your mind? What would you like to look at? What aspect of your life okay. are you curious about? Not to be a narcissist and not to just chill for my own thing, but I'm about to go on tour. Next month, I'm doing a show across the US and a little bit of Canada. So I would like to know how that's gonna go. Or is there like a specific way that I should ask a question? How it's gonna go works for me. Yeah, how is it? How is the tour gonna go? Yeah, we're gonna see how it's gonna go and we're also gonna see how to make it the best that it can be, right? I would, I would like that, yeah. that would be cool. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle and what I'm gonna ask you to do is listen to the shuffle, watch the shuffle, and when you feel like the cards are shuffled, you tell me to stop. Cool. So I'll keep going and going. Just like we're playing a card game, you'll go, yeah, they're good now. Okay. That's when you tell me to stop. So I just tell you when to stop shuffling whenever? Yeah, when you feel like, yeah, we're good. Let's do one more. All right. Now with your left hand. Left hand. I'm going to have you cut into three stacks. Three stacks. Okay. One, two, three. And then with either hand, restack back into one. Okay. Perfect. Cool. All right. Every deck is the same, right? As far as, I mean, not the design, of course, but like of the cards. Oh, okay. So this deck is from 1909. Not the, okay. this particular deck, but the design of this deck is from 1909. So okay. over 100 years old. Yeah. All right. So before we begin, I like to say a blessing over the reading. And what that entails cool. is me for sending you love and light. And then I open up to divine wisdom. And then I set the intention for the reading that it's for the highest good with the highest love and for the highest enlightenment. Cool. So it's going to be a reading that's going to show you great things that you're going to go to, how to get toward them, anything you need to avoid and all of that. Okay? Cool. I would love to know what to avoid. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> so 
So if you don't mind me asking, what when you were just saying that in your head, what do you say? I'm just opening up. It's more of a feeling, like I okay. open up and I connect to you, like I connect heart to heart to you. Mm -hmm. Just open up that top of my head, I guess. It's kind okay. of feeling. So yeah, that's what that's what's happening there. So cool. All right. So. Hmm. So, and let me know if I'm interrupting. You no, can, you talk. You can tell me to shut up whenever. But I've seen this done like a couple of different ways where like one of my friends, my friend Morgan, she would just like shuffle and anytime a card jumped out, then that would be like the card. But you just pulled from the top. So is there like a bunch of different ways that you can read tarot? Is there a way that you prefer? Yeah, so um, when the card jumps out, I do mm -hmm. pay attention to the card that jumps out because it might be a message for the person, but then I stick it back in the deck when it jumps out for me. I don't lay it down as a ah. card that we're reading. Some people do that where they shuffle real loosely and then cards fly out and that's what they use and that's totally a legitimate way. I shuffle and kind of keep it controlled and then pull them off the top, but you cut mm -hmm. the deck. So you had influence on the shuffling. You told me when to stop and mm -hmm. you cut the deck. So you chose the cards. Your subconscious, you know, chose the cards. Okay. So what we're looking at is we're doing a real condensed sort of reading here, but the center card represents you and the essence of this tour. Knight of Cups is a great, great message about travel yes. because we have a guy on a horse. You're not going to go too fast. That's mm -hmm. one of the things. And the Knight of Cups is being on a mission, like following your destiny or following your holy grail, searching for something but really going with your heart's desire. So there's something okay. about this tour that, yes, I think you're doing it for practical reasons. There's definitely that influence in the back, the practical stuff in the front and the back. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's a part of this, it's like things that you love or things that your heart's desire, you're following that heart's desire. A part of the Knight of Cups that's very creative as well. Mm -hmm. And so utilizing your creativity, sharing personal things as you go along, is gonna be really important, of course and to be authentic and to really, I would say, to really follow your heart's desire. Oh my gosh, here comes Hello. Glinda. <laughs> what is this cat's name again? Glinda the Witch Kitty. Glinda, hi. Glinda the Good Witch. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so the Knight of Cups is really about following your heart's desire. And so when I see that, it means travel will be smooth. You're not gonna have travel issues or difficulties in the travel. And pay attention to that heart's desire. You know, there's an economic part of it because we have King of Pentacles and Page of Pentacles. They're both holding mm -hmm. gold coins. Is there a reason that you laid them out the way that you mm -hmm, did? Like, mm -hmm. is there a reason that this is in the center? Mm -hmm. So in this layout that I use, this is like the main card in the center. Mm -hmm. And these are the cards that are influencing it. This is the card of the okay. past. This is the card of the future. This is what the higher self wants, and this is what you need to pay attention to on sort of the more mundane level. Okay. okay. So as I look at this, I see money involved in it, and I actually see a new opportunity opening up for you out of this. Like new things are gonna come from this. So we have the King of Pentacles. Ah, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Hello. So King of Pentacles is saying you're coming from a really strong place, like a mm. really strong place economically. It's established. You've reached a high level. Like that's like really a king. It's a king level. Mm -hmm. So you've reached a really high level, but now you're searching for something new. And as we go forward on this journey, on this tour, Page of Pentacles is saying you're going to discover a new opportunity or something new that's also going to bring in money for you because these are both holding coins around you. So following your heart in this whole journey is really important because it's mm -hmm. going to lead you to the new thing. And that's kind of cool because the, the show is something completely different that I've never done before. So good. So there we go. <laughs> At the foundational level, we have the Four of Cups, and that means opportunities coming to you from a sort of a sideways thing. Like, mm. I think you have an idea of what this is gonna be, but when I see this Four of Cups, pay attention because there's gonna be some opportunity or offer to you that isn't in your like line of sight. It's gonna come off from the side. Okay. So what I would say with all of this, on your tour, you're gonna discover something that's going to be fruitful and lead you in a new direction that you can't see from the point of where you are right now. Okay. Okay? Hanged Man card shows up as your higher self, the, the attainment. 
Um, this is the card of discipline and diligence leading to a reward. So in Norse mythology, the god Odin, he's hanging mm -hmm. by a foot on a tree and he receives enlightenment. I think that this tour is going to require that you be pretty disciplined. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to follow through on things. You're going to have to do, like, check all the boxes, do the things that are going to lead to the, you know, result that you are wanting. And it may feel at sometimes like it's not moving, but you're still mm -hmm. working, but it's not moving, but then it will kind of get in gear and start moving. That's what my whole life feels like. <laughs> it's that I'm just working all the time and sometimes it feels like there's nothing going on, but I'm constantly working. Yeah. Even yeah. when it doesn't feel like I'm working. Doing this with your heart invested in it, it's like the perfect thing. Be creative, invest your emotions into it. It's like you're following your dream and that's like such a good thing. Such cool. a good thing. All right, so next we're gonna do a past life reading. The idea is that your soul is eternal. Okay. That after you die, your soul doesn't go to heaven and you get angel wings. You may go to like a place of refreshment, but then you come back down again and have a new life experience, right? Cool. Reincarnation, right? Okay. And so if we have these experiences where we have many lives, sometimes we still have memories from our old lives that we carry, but we can't really identify them, mm. right? Like why, why am I afraid of the water? I've never had a bad experience in the water, but why am I afraid of the water? It could be- you don't? The deep ocean is terrifying. Like, I'm fine. It's weird. I'm fine with like, I would swim with sharks. Yeah. That's fine. But if you drop me like in the open, open ocean where there's nothing there at all, like, and that's not. And have you ever been out in the open ocean? I've swam like out in the open-ish waters, but there's a beach there and stuff. Yeah. But not like the middle of the ocean where there's nothing. And then you go into water and you open your eyes and there's just eternal darkness forever. And I'd rather there be a shark because at least there's something, but it's that fear of like what's lurking below. I have no idea because I can't see it, but I feel like I'm about to die. Okay, so why would you have this intense emotional experience about something you have never experienced in this lifetime, right? You have an intense fear of something you've never experienced. Why? Mm -hmm. It's past life stuff. It's mm. past life stuff. Do you want to find out? So now, when we look at a past life that has, like, let's say you have a phobia. You have a mm. phobia about it, right? Yeah. Um, if we look at that past life, I'm going to tell you something. It will heal that phobia. Then I'll be able to go in the open yeah. ocean. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because, like, this fear of the open ocean didn't even really exist before the pandemic. But then the pandemic started, and I started just, like, reading more about, like, the ocean and how much we don't know about the ocean. And that's when the fear sort of is just like, oh, yeah, that's terrible. It's bringing up a memory from a past life is what it's doing. Okay, is that something cool. about the, the pandemic and what we're experiencing triggered that, and it reminded you of that. And that's why you're having those strong emotions mm -hmm. about it. So we're going to find out when this happened, and we're going to find out about the lifetime that you had. So the first card that I'm going to have you do, this one's different, so we're not shuffling. You're going to pick a card. Okay. So just look at the cards. Sometimes people look and there's one that's like, ooh, pick me. Mm -hmm. Or um, sometimes they hold their hands over and they feel it. So whatever. I'll do that. I'm going to do a little, a little feely guy. See, ooh, have a little... I'm going to take, take this little guy. Okay, so then just turn it over. Okay. Ah, okay. So... The lifetime, Mesoamerican Aztec. Okay. All right? Definitely, you know, Aztec is the Mexico area and mm -hmm. definitely water around there. Okay. Let's find out about that lifetime, what your sort of role was in that lifetime and okay. experiencing that. Cool. Cool. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go here. Okay. The victim. <laughs> Okay, so when the, with these cards, these open up for me like the story of your lifetime so that I can access that, right? Okay. So the two decks that I'm using, this is called uh, It's Your Karma cards, mm -hmm. the round ones, and then these are archetype cards. Okay. The combination of these two tell me when you lived, mm -hmm. what culture you lived in, and then sort of what was your experience in that lifetime. Okay. Well, what really came forward for me as I as you pulled up this card is the immediate impression that you being out in the ocean was not your choice. Okay. Someone dropped you off as some sacrifice of some kind. So I see you, yeah. So I see you being taken out in a boat 
That, um, that scenario is so horrifying. <laughs> like yeah. somebody just taking me out into the open ocean and just like dropping me off. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Which is why this experience is so, you know, the, the trauma is there from that. That's a traumatic experience mm. being left behind, left behind with no, like you said, I, if there was a shark there, I could feel like something, but you were left completely alone, yeah. abandoned, like mm -hmm. the worst kind of abandonment. Mm. And it's even double kind of betrayal too, because you were blamed for something that you didn't do. You were blamed for some negative thing happening to the ruler, the king, or we would call the king. And you were blamed and you were seen as, you were like the scapegoat. You had nothing to do with it, but it was some treachery on somebody's part. They wanted to get rid of you. You were male in that lifetime. You were in sort of what I would call the court of the king. And this person that sort of saw you as a threat then pointed you out as like, oh, you're bringing bad luck or bad fortune or you're bringing a bad negativity. We need to get rid of you and then we'll get rid of the negativity. And the king bought it. And it was interesting because you didn't know that you were being brought out there, but you were being brought out there as kind of a sacrifice. So, so like I was tricked? You were tricked and then left behind, just left. And then I died. In and that the ocean. You, dry, you drowned in the ocean, yes. So you are someone who is now resistant to having a boss. <laughs> That's funny, because I'm my own boss. <laughs> yes. Working for someone else would not, especially where you would have to like kiss their butt, mm -hmm. would not work for you in this lifetime. Probably in many lifetimes, actually, because um, in having that, you've probably been entrepreneurial through many lifetimes because mm. of this. Because this idea that somebody has control or power over you and would have the ability to, you know, like here's this other, let's call a middle manager that's like throwing you under the bus. You don't want to repeat that cycle again. Mm. So by being your own boss, you'll never have to repeat that cycle. Okay. You're super sensitive to betrayal or super sensitive to alliances and being allied with somebody can really be like a careful thing that you do. You don't hmm. jump into alliances without consideration. Okay. So as I look at this and how you how it has benefited you in this lifetime is your own resources. How you're going to heal it is by bringing in more trust and bringing in people, but always at a sort of equal level. Okay. Not having people that have control and power over you. I think yeah. that's going to make you still have this kind of wariness about that so now here's a question mm -hmm. that's kind of off the path a little bit but in the same realm when we have dreams do you think that dreams maybe are associated with said past lives because sometimes like weird stuff happens in dreams and you're like i don't really know what just happened this yeah. doesn't make any sense do you think that maybe those dreams are tethered to past lives I've had in past life dreams too, where I've definitely been a different time, place, I'm a different person. Mm. And if you have those kind of dreams that you can identify, that helps a lot. Um, you can do it in meditation, reflection, you can do visualizations, you can go back a lot of ways. I mean, people do it under hypnosis all the time, they do past life regression. Hypnosis is something that I'm fascinated about. You should do it. I've always wanted to, because it's one of those things where I'm like, are they actually being hypnotized or because I'm I'm skeptical about it yeah because I mean maybe this also goes back to what you're just talking about is I especially of my own body and self I like being in control so the like me giving up that control to somebody else is like well, I don't know about that but I've always wondered about hypnotism have you ever done hypnotism? I've been hypnotized. I'm okay. not a hypnotherapist. I don't mm. do it, but I've been hypnotized many times. It's really wonderful and helpful. And mm. it can be like, if you want to make changes, like you kind of have to be on board for it. If you go in with like a resistance, like they're going to make me, you know, balk like a chicken or something like that, you're not going to do it. But if you're like, oh, I want to quit this habit or I mm. want to, you know, make a change or get rid of some beliefs that I have, it can be an amazing thing. So. If you have like a limiting belief or if you have some kind of habit that you want to get rid of, it's a fantastic thing, so. Interesting. Yeah. Well, let me know in the comments what bad habits that I show on <laughs> camera that 
I should get rid of. So as we look at this lifetime, I think that there's, it plays out in your reactions to things and how you live your lifetime. I think there can be a lot of healing that you're gonna experience. Now that you realize that your fear of the open water is really tied to this lifetime, it isn't a problem for you in this lifetime, mm. right? I hope not. Who's gonna drop you off in the middle of the ocean? I hope, nobody I hope, is. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> and that's why we're going on a tour bus and not a tour boat. Because I don't want to be dropped in the middle of the ocean. So that's a cool. past life reading. So then we looked at that, we looked at what the incident mm -hmm. was and we found out where it came from. So the third thing we're gonna do is working with a pendulum. I was just about to ask about that. So a pendulum, I'll yeah. teach you how it is done and then you're mm -hmm. gonna do it. Easiest thing in the world. So a pendulum can tell you the answer to yes and no questions. Mm -hmm. Now, it cannot tell you something that you don't already know. So you cannot ask, are these lottery numbers gonna come up? Because you mm -hmm. don't already know that. It has to be something that your intuition would know. Okay. Right? right? So I wouldn't be able to ask if the tour is gonna sell out. You might actually be able to ask that. And okay. I'll tell you why. Because you have a sense of it. Mm. Right? It's okay. not like picking a lottery number where it's random. There's a part of this that is mm. in your control and a sense that you might have about it, right? Okay. So that could be a question that you could ask, right? Okay. So the way you work with a pendulum is mm -hmm. you rest your elbow. And are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. Okay, so you're gonna hold it in your right hand and you're gonna rest your elbow and hold your hand as still and steady as possible. Whenever we're working with a pendulum, the first question that we ask the pendulum is, show me yes. And so we keep our hand as still as possible, and then we wait for the pendulum to start swinging. Now, it's not super magical. It's not but spirits it's moving it. This way, yeah. I think. So, and it's gonna get bigger and bigger as it goes. So the thing with the pendulum is, it's micro movements in your hands, right? Your mm. hand is making the movement, but you're keeping your hand as still as possible. You're not consciously making the movement, right? Mm. So this for me is yes, right? I it, This pendulum always shows me this way is yes. For some people, yes could be clockwise, mm -hmm. and then no would be counterclockwise, or for me, like no is side to side like this, and okay. yes is like this. Do you wanna okay. try it? I will try it. Okay. Okay, so hold it like hold this? It. Yeah, and you can hold this little oh, bead little even. Thing. There, and you rest your elbow, and then we get it nice and still, and you hold your hand as still as possible, and then you ask the question, okay. show me yes. Show me yes. Ooh. Okay, so when you're goes. back and forth, it's okay, your yes. Cool. All right, if it's this way, it's yes, and if it's anything else, it's no. Okay, so you it's can, only yes and no. Yeah, so question. you can only ask yes and no. So then we steal, steal it again, okay. and then you ask a question that has a yes or no answer. And your question that you wanted to ask, is the tour going to sell out? Is the tour going to sell out? Oh, it's kind of going the other way, isn't it? Do you have multiple dates on the tour? 35. So we can ask, are some of the dates going to sell out? Because we are seeing, well, there. Oh. It's going yes now. So here's a question though. Is it going yes because you just asked the question? Of, <laughs> is Maybe. <laughs> or does it have to come from me? It usually should come from you. <laughs> okay. Is the tour going to sell out? I mean, I feel like that was unfair because it was already swinging. <laughs> well, it would stop. It would go a different direction. It's slowing down. That's looking like a no. Well. So maybe, is it possible some of the dates sell out and then some don't? Maybe. That's up to you. <laughs> no. Well, here. Buy your tickets. <laughs> Buy your tickets now. Well, let's see. I can ask a different question. Should I go and get hypnotized? It's kind of weird how it just like slows down. It's kind of going counterclockwise. Yeah, it's kind of saying no. <laughs> At your own peril. <laughs> Maybe that won't be a video that I Then do. you can, it's like a little no. No. It's a, it's a no. This is, it's really cool to watch. I'm trying to think of another. Oh, I have a question for it. I've been thinking about getting a lizard recently. <laughs> But I'm like, oh, do I have time for a lizard? I don't know. Should I get a lizard? I 
hey, it's looking like a yes. Lizard on tour. Maybe he'll bring a lizard on tour. I shouldn't bring a lizard on tour. That would be a bad <laughs> idea. But maybe after tour, I'll give me a little lizard. Oh, that's a yes for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look at that. I like the pendulum. Oh my god. The pendulum's cool. No hypnosis, but yes, get a lizard. No hypnosis, <laughs> but maybe the next video will be me getting a lizard. It probably won't be the next video, but maybe I'll get the lizard. You're going to do the tarot reading now. So before okay. you get started, oh my goodness, wild child. So what are you going to, you can ask a question. It doesn't have to be a yes or no question. It doesn't have to be something that your intuition knows. You can ask anything with a tarot card. So what would you like? To... Am I asking for myself mm -hmm. or am I reading for you? Well... You could read for me, or do you want to read for yourself? I'll read for you. That sounds fun. I don't know how to do it. Oh, you're going to be but, totally good. Okay, you're going to be totally great. good. Okay, so then I have to come up with a question. Okay, so you okay. have to come up with a question. So my question mm -hmm. is, I'm supposed to go to Ukraine in June. Whoa. So what do I need to know about my trip to Ukraine in June? Let's find <laughs> out. Okay, so I shuffle first. Yeah, so shuffle right. the cards. Okay. I haven't, uh, I haven't shuffled like this in a sec, so we'll see. This. All right, so this is my last shuffle. This is ready. your last shuffle. Yeah. Okay. Then you're going to have me cut them? All right, and okay. then... Now put them back. All right. Yes. You're going to hold the cards, and then you're going to focus. Okay. Right? Then you just lay out three cards. We're going to just do a three-card reading. Just one, two, three? Mm -hmm. So when you say, fo what should I be focusing on? I would say, like, get into your center. Like, be okay. focused. Like, trust in it. Trust your intuition. And just pulling from the top or pulling uh -huh. any cards? Pulling from the top. Pulling from the top. Okay. Okay, so we have. Oh. Oh. Uh. Is that bad? Wow, well, you're gonna tell me. Seems bad. And this way. So okay. we've got the Knight of Swords, the Devil, and I don't know. This is devil. the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles. Okay. Now. <laughs> now. Don't know what any of these mean. <laughs> okay. When you look at the cards, think about the question. Mm -hmm. uh, how does my trip to Ukraine in June look? And now. What do you see? Let's look at the Knight of Swords uh -huh. first. What's going on in that card? He's going into battle. But is this past, present, and future? We're not doing that. We're okay. just going to look at three cards. Okay, cool. So he's <laughs> he's charging into battle. He's getting ready for probably the fight of his life. Okay. Um. So, I mean, at first glance, it's like... <laughs> first glance, what are you thinking? Well, maybe it's not a good idea to go to Ukraine in June yeah. based off of this and this. What's, the, what's, what's happening? happening with, yeah, exactly. Ukraine. The devil card. What does yeah. the devil card look like? What's going on there? Um, okay, so the devil is, you know, he's he's sitting above these people. He's got these two people chained up. Is this Adam and Eve? Yeah, yeah. There look we at go. you. I don't get good vibes from it. Yeah, if yeah. I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do get good vibes from this guy, though. I kind of like this guy. Yeah. He's what's just, he doing? He's kind of dancing. He's playing with some balls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's infinity. You're natural. Look at you. Great. So if you were to say to me, oh, what do I need to know about my trip in June? What mm -hmm. would you say? Well, uh, maybe you're going into battle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, sure. no, th say it. Say it. Because your instincts are right. I think you're holding like back because you don't want to be saying no or being rude. But that's yeah. the first rule I mean, of being maybe, a reader. You need to, to tell the truth. Yeah, right? maybe you, you will get involved in something that you didn't think that you would be involved in. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the devil one is like just bad vibes. Like, yeah. you know, maybe... Maybe something not great is gonna happen. Yeah. But maybe on the other side, you'll get an infinite amount of perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I would say, here's, I'm gonna do some ar armchair okay. reading for you. I would say, yeah, probably not a good time to go in June, mm -hmm. but you're gonna go later, right? Oh, okay. Right, juggling it, it's uh -huh. like juggling the time, right? He's okay. juggling. Yeah, so. and there's these ships back there. Yeah. You can go that another time. You don't travel. have to go in June. June mm -hmm. probably isn't great. This is not looking great. This is like oppressive energy. Well, yeah, yeah if there's a war going on mm -hmm. and, you know, all kinds of shenanigans happening over there, then, yeah, you'll go. You'll, but you will go and you'll go later. You liked this card. And I think that's I do like, like that card. Yeah. So based on this, on what just happened here, do you think that you're not going to go in? Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. No. <laughs> I but, mean, I had the plan, but it's probably not going to happen, yeah. So here's a question also with the cards. 
do you read your own cards? Is that a thing people do? People can do it. It's really hard. It's mm. like being your own therapist. A therapist is Because there's kind of like therapy. a bias? Exactly, exactly. Okay. So when you do it for yourself, you're kind of like, well, I know too much about it, right? So if you had to rate my card reading on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the best that you've ever seen in your life, <laughs> one being the worst that you've ever seen in your life, where would you rate me? And I'm not gonna take it personally. For your first time, mm -hmm. you're a 10. Best ever? For, for that you've first ever seen? time? Yeah. You're trusting your intuition. You needed a little mm -hmm. coaxing to like be able to say, you know, what you were thinking. Like that's probably the skill of like to be able to mm -hmm. get it out there. But yeah. And if I can do this as best as you've ever seen, think about the tour that I worked on for a year. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was fascinating. Thank you so much for, one, having me here and, and doing this with me. If people, I don't know if you're currently doing things with the I way teach that the world tarot is. now. I'm teaching classes mostly, teaching classes in magic and witchcraft and tarot. So that's what I'm doing mostly. And if cool. people want to find me, they can find me at parlorofwonders.com. My name is Madam Pamita. Cool. And it was such a pleasure having yeah, you here. Thank you so much. Um, and if you want to learn more, uh, the link that you just said, and that will also be in the description down below. Um, so if, is it only for people that are in the LA area? Or are you doing things online? Uh, everything's on Zoom now, we, all over there the world. Go. We got people all over the world, which is fantastic, yeah. There you go, you don't even have to be local anymore. Well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. This was super fun. So thank you, and maybe next time I won't get hypnotized based on what the <laughs> card said, so. Yeah.